The Ian Collins Late Show Business Update. Indeed. Let's see what's going on in the world of business. Jonathan Davis is with us, Managing Director of Armstrong Davis Chartered Financial Planners. Jonathan, good evening, sir. Hi, Ian. And um, what's going on with the bankers and the bonuses? Well, fun enough, um, they want some champagne because they haven't got enough. <laughs> Although they want I... us to pay for it with all uh, with our future taxes. You see, half of me wants to take them out the back and give them a good slap. And then I think, well, have they got a point? I hate to say this, but have they got a point that if they don't get the bonuses, they'll just go and work somewhere else? Where are they going to work? Well, a bank that might give them a bonus. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll tell you what, um, l- let them do that. Um, they, they're not going to not be bankers um, if they can't get the pay because, you know, they'll do perfectly well on half a million pound a year sure. um, as opposed to five million pounds a year. <laughs> what, what you need to understand here is that less than 1% of the working population has bankrupted our economy. Yeah. It's as simple as that. Yeah. Um, we're borrowing this year 13% of our national income. Uh, when uh, Dennis Healy in the 1970s, our then Chancellor, went to the International Monetary Fund, we were practically bankrupt on 7%, 7% borrowing. Yeah. And uh, within a few years, the Treasury forecasts already are that our government, on our behalf, is going to owe more than one times our national income. It's never been seen in peacetime before. So what happens... And we're going to pay for it for the next ten years. What I was going to say, this, I suppose, will manifest after the next general election. Absolutely. It? It's already started. Yeah. High, higher rate incomes, people earning above £100,000 a year, we're going to be paying um, 50% tax. Um, it's already started, and you're absolutely correct. After the next election, that's when the man and woman on the street really realises how dire our situation is. But, of course, the average man on the street isn't going to be paying that 50%, and they'll, some of them would think it's reasonable, Jonathan, that uh, a few rich old duffers have to. Well, um, uh, <laughs> you, you, you talk about rich old duffers. We're, we're talking about uh, um, extraordinarily wealthy. We're talking about fabulous wealth here. Tens of millions of pounds a year have been taken um, yeah. by the bankers. And, uh, you know, e- even people on very normal incomes of 20, 30, 40,000 pounds a year, they're going to, we're all going to find that our uh, council taxes are going to go up. We're going to find VAT is going to go up. National insurance is going to go up. Absolutely. Um, we're, we're all going to be taxed for this, and we're going to be taxed for the next... 10 plus years. So tell me the, then. The economy has changed. Tell me, Jonathan, in the midst of all this financial tax based chaos that's going to be imposed on us, how could it be a good thing that house prices are going up? Um, I personally don't believe that it is a good thing because um, it, 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 it's, yet a, it's yet another symptom of the ridiculousness of the economy. We have an economy based on banking and buying and selling houses. When you've got Germany, the strongest economy in Europe, funnily enough, actually makes things that people want to buy. And there lies the fundamental difference between us and them. Is that your point? That is indeed my point. We, we, uh, you know, I read a very interesting thing today that, you know, everyone talks about uh, uh, Thatcher, how she um, ruined the economy by making it all into services. Well, Brown, as it happens, decimated manufacturing in the last 12 years more than Thatcher did, and he, put, he, he made it such that banking and financial services was a bigger part of our economy um, in proportional to increased terms yes. than Thatcher did. In, in that respect, he, he took Thatcher uh, ideology to a, a whole he, different he level. He certainly did. He uh, went way beyond extremes. And, you know, continually he said, we're going to end boom and bust. Oh. Well, you know, it's unbelievable, I, I and it continues. I, Nothing's I don't changed. Think, I don't think he's paid enough of a price for that a boom and bust. Thing. I mean, it comes back to haunt him every now and again, but not as much as you would think it does. On that point, Jonathan, of house prices, do you foresee them, in that case, going down again? Um, I, I believe that 2009 um, has been simply a temporary rally yep. in a longer-term downtrend. And it's been financed by massive government stimulus, as we've just been talking about. Yep. Um, and um, it, it's, it, but 
and also because of the decimation of our currency. So we've had a lot of foreigners buying multi-million pound homes in you know, wealthier parts of London. And because the numbers of transactions are still relatively low, at 40 to 50,000 a month, mm -hmm. compared to long run average of over 100,000 a month, sure. th those relatively small numbers of transactions in London have actually increased the average price. We have no recovery in house prices. Sorry, we have no recovery in the housing market. Um, so, yes, I I'm still forecasting a big downtrend in house prices starting very soon, going into next year, certainly picking up after the next election, and well into 2011. When you say picking up, you mean the downturn picking yes, up, yes. as it were. Right, yeah, yeah, it. The, yeah, the yeah. speed of the, the downturn yeah. Uh, rekindling, yeah. All right, good work. Listen, Jonathan, pleasure to have you on, as always. Jonathan Davis is the Managing Director of Armstrong Davis Chartered Financial Planners, uh, website armstrongdavis.com. The Ian Collins Late Show Business Update. Uh, we've got LaDon Harvey with us later on. LaDon